Welcome back everybody, welcome back to another match reaction. I'm gonna not spend too much time on the intro, I really just want to get into this. I mean, judging by what you can see on screen, it's, I mean, I look a mess, I feel a mess, I, I don't know what to think anymore. Um, I'm sure the game hasn't helped. Yeah, I'll run through the usuals, of course, if you are new here, please hit the subscribe button. And of course, leave a like on the video and if you want to help support the channel further, there is a members link top line in the description. But I just want to move on with this game because it's big. Ramifications of the result are big. The performance, the decisions, everything surrounding this game has made my head hot. I'm holding in the, the urge to just explode but i feel like if i rant it comes off as maybe slightly entitled and um you know just that sort of way of throwing my dummy out that we're not winning the premier league that sort of thing so i, I i'm i'm refraining from raising my voice getting too angry because i don't want to do that i don't want to come across as that but it's hard it's hard not to it, it, it's really hard not to i mean where where do i start there's so many things i want to say about this game but i don't know which place to start i've got to try and condense my thoughts somehow but it's going to be very very difficult given exactly what went on if you watch the game you'll understand what i'm saying let's start with the first half nothing happened nothing we did nothing ake had a half shot half stab that was saved straight at Raya from a corner, and that was that was it from us. Gabriel Jesus had a couple of shots, cause he missed. We know he's going to do that because can't finish his dinner, and that was it. That would, in terms of highlights, in terms of moments from the game, things that you'll find in the Sky Sports highlights, things that you'll find clipped up online. First half, that's it. That is your lot. Terrible from both teams. Just from an Arsenal perspective, it's going to come across as salty. I know this, but I'm 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 saying it how I feel. I'm not one to shy away from my own opinions. If you disagree, you disagree. But that was cowardice. At the start of the day, the start of Sunday before Liverpool played, they were top of the Premier League on an unbeaten run in 2024, like us, slapping teams left, right, and centre, and they parked the bus. They parked, They played with a back six, like the back four, and the two wingers played as wing backs defensively. You wouldn't think that that is a top side. That comes across as salty, I know, but I mean, fair, look, fair play to Arsenal. They got pretty much what they wanted. Yes, they wanted to win, and they wanted a moment to be able to win it. But a draw isn't the end of the world for them. However, you flip it the other way around. We knew going into this game, a draw is as good as a loss for us. We could not afford to drop more points. So Arsenal were okay with the draw. That's why they're kind of happy. That's why they're kind of celebrating because it's still on for them. Liverpool draw or Liverpool lose, they're back in it. We, we couldn't afford that. If we drew this game... You know, if Liverpool went and dropped points by drawing, we'd still need to do it, them to do it again. Which is why a draw is no good to us, but a draw for Arsenal, they can still feel some sort of hope. So the game plan, fair play, it worked. Congratulations, you got kind of what you wanted. But they sat in a 6-4 six, six pretty much. Because Havertz was playing up top. They had the two holding midfielders sitting in front of the back six. And they had Erdegaard and Havertz, two number 10s, sitting in front of that. It was cowardice. All this talk, all this chest, all this, we're going to smash you. I, I remember doing live shows before the game, Arsenal fans coming in saying they're going to win 3-1. Laughable. The, the amount they bigged up their own team to go and play like that, packing two buses, two rows in front of their own box. But it worked. It worked, and I mean, that kind of brings us on to our side of things. I mentioned draw not being good enough. We got a draw. It's not good enough. For me, I, it's not reactionary. I've had long enough to calm down from the match. To be honest, scrolling through Twitter, trying to find pictures for a thumbnail, um, it made my head hot again. 
just just seeing it, just reminding it, because I kind of forgot after the game. I tried, I tried my best to forget. I did, I forgot. And then coming back to it, I'm like, I have to do this video. I have to go and re relive that game, rewatch it in my mind, pick out moments. And it just frustrated me again. For me, it's done. The league title isn't done. The winner's not set. Arsenal and Liverpool are still going to battle it out. But for me, we're done. I'm not sugarcoating it. I'm not react. It's not reactionary. It's not me spitting my dummy out. I think we are done. I think we are out of the race. Because we haven't beaten anyone good. Traditional top six, who've we beaten? Man United, that's it. Look further on from that. If you look at the top four challenges, you throw Aston Villa in there, we lost that as well. The highest position team that we've beaten in the league this season is Man United, and they're in sixth. And we know Man United, in the last month, they've conceded like the most shots in the Premier League out of any team in the last month. Almost 200, I believe it was. I can't, I, that was a Sky Sports graphic. I don't know whether it was in the last month. I forgot the time frame because my head is still hot. I, 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 I don't have time to rem be remembering stats about Manchester United, but I know they are conceding shots left, right and centre. Brentford had, what, 30 or something like that? They absolutely peppered them the other night. So realistically, is it any achievement beating those twice? Yeah, it feels great, but that's the, best, that's the highest position team that we've beaten is that. Next after that is West Ham, Newcastle. Newcastle of which are struggling. Everybody knows they are struggling. West Ham got battered 6-0 by Arsenal. Anyone who's at the top, anyone who is any good, has gotten something from us this season. And that's our biggest downfall. How am I supposed to be going into games now confident? We've got Villa next. How am I supposed to be confident? I can't even be confident of Villa at home. Because any time we come up against anyone who's half decent, we struggle. That's the pattern this season. The Chelsea are in 10th. We didn't beat those. Look at them in the FA Cup semi-final. You confident about that? I want to say I am because they're a mess. But they're a mess that have gotten two points from us. Two draws. It's got four in one game against us. It's hard to, to have any sort of positive outlook. We haven't lost. But how many times have we come out from a game saying, we haven't lost? You know, we haven't won the game, but we haven't lost the game. We haven't lost any ground on our rivals. We haven't gained any either. We're not beating them. That's the biggest downfall that we've had this season. And why, in my opinion, we're out of the race. When it mattered most, against the top teams, we didn't do what we needed to do. I thought this team was built for the big occasions, built for the big games, but clearly I was mistaken. Clearly there's a few players in here. Yes, there's a few young players. Yes, the squad has had a significant turnaround. We're in a slight transition period. New players all across the board in you know, all aspects of the pitch. New defenders, new midfielders, new attackers. It's going to happen. It wasn't going to be plain sailing. But to not beat one of your title rivals, not even at home, we didn't score against Arsenal this season. I don't count the community shield. It is a friendly. And even then, the player who scored in it plays for Chelsea. <laughs> we got rid of him. So that's, that's where I stand. I think we're out. I think we're out of the race. I would concentrate on the Champions League more, if you can even be confident for that, because... Real Madrid have to be watching that and licking their lips. I mean, I'll throw up a player ratings on screen. I almost forgot to mention it. I did do them. <sighs> if you disagree, I don't care. I, I really don't care. I watch football with my eyes. This is what I saw. Um, defensively, we were, we were good. Because Arsenal troubled very little. They sat back, had a couple of counters. That was it. We dealt with it. Um... And then you move into the the midfield and forward areas, and it was just nothing. It was just nothing. There's nothing really to speak about with the defence. The goalkeeper, really, it was just kind of standard. They played well. Bernardo Silva was probably exempt from that. He's a big game player. He gets up for it. Played multiple positions in that match. Ran his socks off. Um, and then you look at the rest of it. I mean, look, Kovacic, I don't think, was too bad, but it just wasn't his sort of game. Arsenal sat back, so he had more responsibility in going forwards and trying to help us create something. He didn't do that. So understandably, he was taken off, which is the right decision. I will get onto those subs. That's another point I want to get onto because my head genuinely exploded when I 
saw the subs. Kevin De Bruyne, I thought, had a d- truly abysmal 70 minutes. Um, but he redeemed himself, kind of, in the last 20 minutes. That was like vintage De Bruyne. I don't know where he's been for the last three games he's played. You know, Man United, Liverpool, and then the first 70 in this match. I don't know where he's been. Um, he was making those deep, powerful runs from midfield and progressing the ball. Those last 20 minutes is exactly what we needed, but for a longer duration of time. Now, I'm I'm willing to give a bit of the benefit of the doubt because, of course, he's still in that grey area of is he fully back yet? Because, I mean, as you know, um, had the big injury, came back, got another tiny little injury after a couple of games, came back again, had another little tiny injury or slight tweak that they didn't want to risk after another couple of games. Then he had the international break where he had two weeks where he was just training. I'm willing to give slight benefit of the doubt that it's just him still trying to find his legs because he just can't keep up that intensity for 90 minutes. But, I mean, it still wasn't a good 70 minutes. Again, last 20 minutes, he was probably the most dangerous player we had on the pitch. But for that first 70, it was just... I mean, just before the substitutions happened, he put a cross out for a goal kick. I know, I was almost tearing my hair out. Um, I probably could have done with it, but... It was just poor. And then you look at Haaland, and if he's not served up a chance on a silver platter, what does he do of recent... That I think Roy Keane described, you know, his his actual on the ball work. He said that he was, you know, the greatest finisher. But his on the ball work is truly terrible. I can't sit here and disagree. I can't sit here and go, Roy Keane has no right to say that. He's wrong to say that. I can't say that. I can't seriously sit here and 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 tell Roy Keane that he's wrong for saying that. You know, Arsenal centre halves probably the two best players in the match. That's how the game went. They had to do a lot of defending and they did it well. Alan Bailey got a kick. He did relatively nothing apart from, I don't know, maybe trying to start a fight. He had some words with Gabriel. That was about it. Like, it's 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 no sugarcoating. It's just the brutal, honest truth. And then Phil Foden, he wasn't great today, but he stuck out on the left wing. Which then brings me on to the substitutions. Um... I can't. I, I I tweeted this as well. Um, I can't fathom. I can't think for the life of me. Who in their right mind in this sort of game takes Phil Foden off? They are sat with a double, two double decker buses in front of their 18 yard box. You need a spark. You need creativity. You need a little something. And you take Phil Foden off the pitch. You start him on the left, which is a crime within itself. When you have Grealish fit, when you have Doku fit, and then Foden hasn't really played off the left in probably about two years. You play him off the left, you nullify him, and then you take him off after an hour. For Jeremy Doku, who, when he came on, did nothing apart from beat his man and then give the ball away. Which is typical of him this season. I'm not getting on Doku's case. I've defended him a lot on the streams. You know this. If you watch the streams, I've defended him a lot. I've said he gets too much heat. And it's not on him for coming on. He didn't say, Pep, bring me on. I want to come on. I'm going to win you the game. Pep decided to make that sub. But it is baffling. Because you look at the way the game goes, Doku comes on on the right. Doku has two chances in the box. He gets both of them horribly, horribly wrong. Those chances should be falling to Phil Foden, who would do more in that situation. I guarantee you would do more in that situation. He takes him off. I, d- I don't get it. I was baffled. That, 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 on the hour mark, when he took him off, that really made me lose my head. I was gone. I was. I couldn't believe it. I was absolutely gobsmacked when he took him off. I could not believe what I was seeing. And that falls on Pep. I've gone in on the players enough in terms of some of the, the individual performances and 
and stuff. But I'll, the, there's certain aspects that go on Pep, the substitutions. I'm not blaming him for the team selection. We are, we are handicapped at the back. We don't have much option at the back. We're missing a lot of defenders. I get it. He's got to do something. He changed it tactically. But the subs... By the subs, it really made me lose my head. Um, I don't know about you, but I just couldn't. I, I really, really couldn't. I could not understand it for the life of me. And it just frustrated me. And I think that set the tone for the last 30 minutes. That it was just, just so dead. We looked so divided of ideas. Greeley should get the ball. He'd have two or three men on him. Doc would get the ball. Like I said, he'd beat his man. And then he'd pass it straight back to Arsenal. But we knew that that was going to be the case. Because he does that. That's that's the, the, the negative of him being so young with, you know, a high ceiling is he's going to make mistakes. He's not going to blow everybody out the water. He's going to do things wrong. Of course he is. But why he was trusted to come on for our player of the season, arguably, you can argue Rodri, one of the two, Phil Vorden, one of the players of the season, take him off for Doku, who can be hit or miss. I'm sorry, is just baffling absolutely baffling um that's the players that's the manager i suppose this has gone on a long time but i feel like it's a it's a therapy session really if anything i think we're out of the i think we're out of the title race I said that at the start i think we're done it'll take a minor miracle for us to go and win it from here i'd love to be proved wrong but i have this feeling it's my opinion i'm allowed to have it that we're done we're done. We will not win the Premier League, and God knows what's going to happen against Aston Villa. But look, that's enough on the game. On the players, congratulations to Arsenal for not getting battered this time. They had a game plan; it worked. Um, they're in a shootout now. We are third favourites, um, but I'm going to stop there. Um, look, I imagine there'll be a stream at some point as well to go over this because there is a lot more detail to go into. There's a few off the field things as well that I didn't mention, like banners and stuff that I'm sure would come up in conversation in the stream. So, like I said, at the start of this video, if you would subscribe, if you are new, turn your notification bells on so you don't miss that stream whenever it may be. Leave a like on the video as well on your way out. Be massively appreciated. And of course, there is a link top line in the description to become a channel member if you want to support the channel further. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you at some point in the week.